Okay. One, two, three. Okay, so... Okay. I didn't think I was gonna be able to... to stream, if I'm being honest. Um, we will hold the line, Sarah. You may concentrate on the task at hand. Okay. I just finished uh, raiding with uh, my my FC, and uh, yeah, it went pretty well. I got some good gear. So, yeah, I mean, we finished pretty fast too, like about 40, yeah, let's say 40 minutes rounding it up. Or, yeah, estimated anyway, and, um, and I don't feel tired yet or anything, or worn out, so, yeah, I mean, I thought, why not? Let's squeeze in a stream because tomorrow's gonna be maintenance. Maintenance night. I'm not gonna be able to stream at all, obviously. So, so yeah, I decided to pop on and get some couple minutes in at least. So, we'll see what's going on right here. God bless whoever designed this uniform. I would have frozen to death by now if it weren't for that, for this great coat. <laughs> here we're seeing a lot of the uh, guys here. Let me kill that thing. Oh, that is a big one over there. Oh, there's a guy up here. There's another one over here, looking at the wall. Huh. It doesn't seem that there's anyone else to talk with, unless it's <laughs> the Tagger Temple Knight still, huh? We are at a disadvantage here. We should linger no longer than necessary. We have established a defensive perimeter. You need not worry about attack from the rear. May the Fury guide and protect you, Siri. Thanks. And I mean, I know you're like Elizin, but man... You are tall. Okay, well, what else can we do in the meantime? You know, so we're not like loitering about. Mm -hmm. Alright, I guess we could do some fates that's not this, so that way I can get some. Which called the uh, seals? There you go, Grand Company seals. Okay. As in it, just like the way it looks, just from the outside, it looks pretty amazing. Or wait, maybe we can talk to some of these people. Maybe we can get some uh, quests done. A little bit of experience wouldn't hurt. And we're doing something in the meantime, so... Better than nothing. Living on the edge. You're that Siri, aren't you? Well met, well met. Give us a hat. One of the Dragoons has fallen clean over the cliff. Holy shit. Did he jump too high, miss? He lives, praise the Fury. We can tell that much from the top. A brother the knight stayed behind the cliff. and awaits a coil rope. See here. Can you go to the keep for the rope and deliver it thither? I'm um, for the infirmary. Okay. Uh, oh wait, it's over there. Okay. Patrick. That's like the most normal name I've seen around here. Okay, uh, where do we take this? Over there. Okay. All right. Let's go help this uh, dragoon who just yeeted himself right off the edge. <laughs> oh, there he is. You know, if he's a dragoon, why can't he just jump out? <gasps> Wait a minute. I can talk to him. You too, huh? 
What do you mean you came to rescue me? You're on the wrong floor, friend. What do you plan to do? Throw me up the cliff? Uh... Do you doubt my strength? I can probably do that, but... So I can avoid getting hurt too badly, let's give him the rope. What do you want? Bring rope for the rescue? Excuse my churlishness. Uh, I've been stymied at every turn in helping my brother knight. This made me forget my courtesy. I know, I get it. You're, you're stressed. We say things we don't mean when we're stressed out sometimes. But with both our coils tight end on end, it may just be long enough. Throw the end of it down to him. The fear he help us, it would not fall. The wind blows it out of his reach, yet again. What are we to do? Jump down with it? I guess so. Geronimo! Ow. My ankles. <laughs> so you jumped down a cliff. On purpose. I can certainly respect that. You're a woman with a plan. You do have a plan, don't you? Of course I do. Oh, I look. Let's see. This bramble weed rope, twisted from several thinner ropes, appears strong enough to support the weight of a grown Rogadin. Oh, look. So you're in good hands. Rope. High winds, huh? But this rope will hang straight with the weight of a man upon it. So we shall both climb back and over the precipice. Yeah, you'll be fine. Hey, wait a minute. Where did his friend go? Um, okay. I heard, was he? The infirmary, infirmary will be relieved to hear of it. Always sure on something they are. Ishgard scolds us for using ventures for too many things, but I say Sodom. They will send reinforcements and threats to denounce any knight who asks for them. The way I see it, a good venture is worth more than their words. Oh, thank you. Helping the people of Ishgard. You know, maybe this will put us in good graces. Mr. Cookman. Foskinet. Hi. We've got a rat problem. And if nothing's done about it now, we shall soon have a supply problem and a plague problem. They're no more content with the kitchen than the pot boy is. And have a run to the outpost. They feed off our scraps. Unwanted guests at a meager feast. See if you can't have a good look around and rouse up a few to sleep. Sure, I, I can kill some rats. Not the first time I've done that. Whoa. Maybe I should not walk into the middle of that. Where are they going, these fucking rats? Oh! I found it. Rotting vegetables. Any tracks? Uh, they would have been nibbled on a little bit, but... <gasps> oh, hello. Found them. You're dead. You're dead. And dead. Well, that was one little place that they popped up. Okay. Let's see. Where else could they be? Uh, excuse me, Patrick, I gotta investigate this, uh, pile of rotting vegetables. And, uh, you might want to stand back a little bit. <laughs> Oops. A lot of times the wrong guy. Damn. Oh, look. Did I send you? Are you okay? Yeah, you're fine. I don't think I ever noticed these two. What the hell? I've heard many a tale of Vilbrun's shimmering waters, teeming with life innumerable and unimaginable. But in the sea of clouds, well, but in the sea of clouds, still far more fantastic species, unlike anything you might find in the five seas. Take out the pole and cast a line if you doubt my words. Oh, they're talking about fishing. In times of relative calm, the soldiers of House Durandere expect to receive only the best equipment. <coughs> Excuse me. But now that all of Whiteburn Front is preparing to retake the stone vigil, they have a desperate need for material. So as individuals like me who can procure it. I'm assuming these are like crafting, gathering stuff. 
That makes sense. Okay. So I guess... Where is the... Oh, found it. The last pile of rotting vegetables. Oh, wait, aren't pumpkins fruit? Damn rats. Alright. That's all of them. Okay, sir, I took care of your rat problem. Good and well. That's fear of the vermin to get our to get our larder. They remain too numerous, however. There must be a large nest somewhere down below. Kill the king rat and the common rats will lose heart. Something both we and the dragons know well. I've tracked the rats well as I can, and they look to slip outside as often as not. There must be an opening that leads to the nest somewhere outside the stronghold. Alright. Search the rats' nest. Okay. Huh. Okay. Not here. So let's search the outside walls. I don't see anything here. found it. The rat's nest. Alright, you little bastards, come out. Oh, whoa, he's a big one. Alright, we ain't gonna do much. Bam. Alright, dead. I am a master exterminator. Our friend, the rats are no longer a problem, at least for the time being. That's the end of the king, is it? Well struck. We'll see less of the foul little things I expect. That's it. Sailors talk of rats abandoning a sinking ship, do they not? Perhaps I should more rightly take it as a good omen that the rats stay to stay in Wyprin. <laughs> uh, true, there was something bad about the place and they got the hell out, then yeah, that's probably not a good sign. For my days of being in the forest and hunting, I would say that, yeah. When you see animals suddenly running off in one place, you know, it looks like they're evacuating, and it's a bunch of them running, you know, stampeding out. Never a good sign, and don't go the way they ran away from. <laughs> it's an ill night for patrols in this blizzard. We had contact via Link Pro. One of the parties has managed to blunder into the behemoth's dominion of all places. The cold and fatigue have robbed them of their mobility. I've heard it said, you are as a snow wolf, feeling the cold far less than other women. If you can get this brandywine to the patrol, you'll save lives tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I tend to handle cold fairly well. I mean, I've been exposed to the elements before. Overthink adventure. Do not presume to pursue the behemoth to battle. You will fail. And you will die. Rescue the dragoons. That is your task this day, and not more. Okay. Behemoth. I kind of want to kill it though. I mean, I killed that one in the Crystal Tower, I think. Was it the Crystal Tower or was it in the World of Darkness? Somewhere around there. That was awesome. There they are. Oh, they're all over here. Hi. Oh, what are you doing here? You, you moon brain. Being here with the walks nearby, we cannot move. Save yourself. Uh, this speed distills very worms from the inside. Here we go. Oh, what's this? Hold it against my lips. There. Look, look, look. Amazing. I can feel my feet again. I believe. Yes, I can walk again. Alright. So where's the behemoth? Behemoth's dominion. Uh, 
I don't see a behemoth. I don't know what he's worrying about. Okay. Alright, I guess we'll go back. There's something here, though. Nothing. I don't know what this dude's worrying about. Then again, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay, so we'll just head down and we'll let the guy know that we uh, saved his friends. Oh, hello. No wolf indeed. You will not. Oh, <laughs> there it is. out of character, but I don't really like the music of this place. It seems too serene for what's happening, or what, you know, the purpose of this is. Hey, this is my group! <laughs> Two Dragoons, hey! Let's do this, yo! Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, we got this, we got this. Okay, we got it. up everything. Alright. Okay, we just went dead. Alright, now it's dead. And now it's dead. Huzzah! <laughs> I just realized the name is one of the evil losers. <laughs> oh, I love that. Alright, looks like my other fellow cat girl is the Jagoon. Nice. Fucking snow drift. Oh wait, that's right, we had to kill him first! Oh! Die! Okay, okay, oof. Got him. We're doing good, we're doing good. Tundra? 
fuck is this? Oh, you bastard. Alright. Hey! Our ice powers run for nothing. Ha ha ha. I don't want this. Pass. See, this is another fellow cat girl who is like has a greater resistance against the cold, just like me. Right. We don't stand too close, I'm fine. You might want to get out of the snow. Get out of the wind, get out of the wind, get out of the wind. Oh goodness. Alright, get out of the frostbite. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, okay, that's a bit too cold. That not even, I don't think my other fellow cackle can resist either. Boss fight. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, man. Alright, we got this, we got this, we got this. It's fine. Alright, we got him. Let's go, let's go. Perfect. Remember correctly though, this is me out of character. Um, you, it's really difficult to kill him unless you throw like snowballs at him with the those things, the spriggans. Although he's going down about as quickly as a regular boss though, so I don't know. The point is like um, you only supposed to use snowballs when he's about to do like this room wide AOE that's like unavoidable. unavoidable. So I use that to like interrupt it. Just kill this dude because he's in the way. Bastard. Be gone with you. Oi. He's trying to destroy the snowballs, motherfucker. Uh oh, did we lose the snowballs? Oh. Get the snowball, get the snowball, get the snowball! Oh my god, they got him. Whew. Okay, we got this. Got one over there. Oh, get him. Stop. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, can you not? Get out of here. It wasn't enough to stop him. Oh, smack a snowball, smack a snowball. Oh. That was close. All 
All right. Oh, here we got him. Uh, I don't want that. Oh, whoops. There we go. Just doing a free for all now, huh? Damn. I hate that my AoE is like limited to this though. Come on. It's kind of annoying. Okay. Oh, what? Where did that come from? I'm hearing things breaking. Get out of that. easy. Good job, guys. Oui. Okay. <gasps> Dragons! What the hell is this? Strident scream? Get him, get him, get him, get him. Alright. Dead. I was expecting to see the, um, oh, it's gonna close in a few seconds, but I guess they're being nice enough to let me watch the cutscene. <laughs> Thank you. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Alright, we got this. I, I vaguely remember this fight. I... Wait. Oh, okay, I thought I messed up my mutation of that little bit. Okay, he's not doing Lunar Prime. Alright, we're good. Okay. Oh wow, he's going down like a sack of potatoes. Oh shit. There it is, there it is. Run! Alright, get behind here. Alright, here we go, here we go. We got him, we got him on the ropes. Alright, 
Okay, he's not doing Lunar Cry, so we don't stand too close to that, because he's going to explode anyway. Alright, we got it. Yeah! To the dungeons! Whoa. I just picked up some things and I don't know what. Yeah. We got it. Oh sure. I was not looking at this. The tales do not do you justice, warrior of light. Oh what? What do you mean by that? You hear to talk shit? Yes. You can talk shit, you're gonna I get hit. I know who you are, and you know who I am. Do I? I was given the name Izel, but I earned the name Iceheart. Ah, well, at least I can tell them what your name is. Izel. Alright, I'm here to fuck your shit up right now. This endless cycle of hatred, of bloodshed. Of sorrow. You would see it continue, O oh noble warrior of light. What kind of question is that? I mean, I live for violence. I would not. I will not. Oh? I will bring an end to this war between dragon and man, no matter the cost. That time, seems a little extremist. To understand that what we do. We do for the greater good. For Eosia. For Hydaelyn. Wait. Wait, why, why did you bring up Crystal Mommy's name? That looks like an etherite like you see in the Beast Tribe uh, areas. Oh shit. Um. Well, Elfie and Amurk are not gonna be too happy that she kinda slipped away from me. Um. Uh, uh. Hey, Alphanod. I uh, have a little bit of bad news. I do got some good news. I got her name, at least. That took longer than I expected. What news, Seria? Uh, yeah, she got away. But she disappeared into this etherite. So Iceheart is but a pseudonym. Not that it matters. Oh yeah, her real name, yeah. <laughs> that she managed to escape is regrettable. But from your description of that beast, you did well to come as close as you did. In any case, now that you have cleared a path, the Temple Knights can begin this to survey the tunnels in earnest. Mayhap that we will find a route past the ice wall. Wouldn't that do wonders for their fight against the heretics? The Crystal Braves will certainly share the credit for it too. So I'll be praised, Sari. We may yet turn the situation to our advantage. Assuming we stop Iceheart before she summons Shiva, of course. Needless to say, our fellow scions have not been idle. Minfili and Urianche have been busy perusing the archives of House Four Tops, gathering what information they can on Shiva. Which reminds me. If you're intending to trudge back to Camp Dragonhead to report on the day's events, then don't. The antecedent should be here any minute. I can only assume some people enjoy subjecting themselves to this gold. Uh, I mean, th th that's on your. That's kind of your fault. You just refuse to get a coat for whatever reason. I'm in failure though. Hmm. I don't know if she can handle cold. Especially with what she normally- oh look! <laughs> look, you're, you're just too lazy to get a coat, Alphanod. I feel like was smart enough to get one. But look at it, it looks nice and cozy too. She actually looks good in that. Antecedent. You come to us straight from the archives of House Four Tops. I trust your time there, proof fruitful. Would that I had. Rianche and I scoured countless texts. 
But what we found was of questionable veracity. Accounts of Shiva's life and deeds are sparse and contradictory, only agreeing upon one point. She lay down with a dragon, the gravest of all sins, according to the Ashgardian faith. So they're all saying that she fucked the dragon? Do, do, do they at least say how it happened? No? Uh, okay then. Yet in the eyes of High Heart's followers, this was a holy act, the blessed union of man and dragon. How such a thing could even be possible is quite another question. There you go! See? <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> I'm not the only one wondering this. Suffice it to say, I very much doubt that we will find a useful answer in the archives of House Fort Tom. Much knowledge has been lost over the centuries, though in this case, one wonders if it is by circumstance or design. You said that Iceheart took a moment to plead her case prior to escaping, did you not? Oh yeah, she was like saying that she wanted to end the war between them. Huh. Viewed without prejudice, most would agree that bringing an end to an endless war serves the greater good. Yeah. I think Sir Aimric might take issue with her methods. Yeah. Speak of the devil, he's over there. I do not care if a few stragglers manage to escape until the strapper sappers confirm that a tunnel is safe. The men are not to search it. Yes, Lord Commander. You gonna go talk to them? Okay. My cat ears can listen from afar. You pursue your foes, your foes with less zeal than I had expected, Sir Amrick. Lest you misunderstand, I do not deny that our enemy has given us good reason to be prudent. I merely meant, you being a man of faith, that I had expected a certain single-mindedness. After all, was it not was it not by the will of Halone that your ancestors came to this land? Why they took up arms against the Dravanians? What would they have done in your position, I wonder? There are those who believe that faith is a renunci renunciation of free will. That unquestioning devotion is, devour is the required of all who would live a life in service to the Fury. Such righteous fervor may well serve a knight on the front line, less so a leader of men. We are all uh, we are all at liberty to interpret the scripture as we will. I choose to believe that the Fury would value the lives of her followers over the deaths of her enemies. But I would not presume to speak for the Knights of Eld, till it's a different time, nay, a different era. And scripture tells us only so much. Would that it told us more. Well, I guess uh, that was interesting, huh? If not. That man is awfully pragmatic to for a servant of the Holy See. A welcome trade at the negotiating table, to be sure. Less so when one's enemies are making ready to harness the power of a god. Mayhap he does not truly believe that Iceheart's plan can succeed. Truth be told, I too remain somewhat skeptical. Shiva was real. A living, breathing woman. Of that there could be no doubt. In this respect, she deferred differs from every other figure to have been summoned, each of whom was worshipped as a god. But yeah, I was going to say King Mogul Mog, that, that was a different thing. The sole exception being good King Mogul Mog the Twelfth, the myth made manifest in response to the fervent supplications of the Mogul's guard. Saint Shiva may differ, but what of the heretics? They are a tribe of outcasts, at war with a mighty nation, who yearn for the resurrection of the one who embodies their beliefs. If that is not placing one's faith in a higher power, then what is? Crystals and conviction, Menphilia. They have them both in abundance. Can that truly be all that is required? Maybe. My survey team has concluded a preliminary analysis of the etherite, 
Ice Heart used to escape. They believe that she teleported to another etherite somewhere not far to the west. Despite the apparent proximity of the second etherite, however, they have been wholly unable to detect its presence directly. Unless I Heart has some means to mask its signal, I can only presume she had it destroyed to prevent us from following her. Without the means to teleport as she did, we have no choice but to search for any alternate route. Most likely a tunnel, assuming one exists. Let us not give up on teleportation just yet. One of our colleagues in Charlie may be able to assist us. Oh, you got another colleague? I pray that you are right. I dare not think how long it will take us to survey the entire tunnel system. Yeah, that would take ages. While Minfili looks into our etherite problem, I would like to request your assistance with another matter. The third unit is currently tracking the remnants of the heretic force which attacked us. However, the search goes poorly, despite our numbers. Curthus is vast, and Iceheart's followers know the terrain far better than we. Your knowledge of this reason, region may serve to hasten the process. The sooner we capture Iceheart's followers, the sooner we can press them for their leader's whereabouts. Also, that is admittedly a selfish request. I feel that my braves would benefit immensely from working alongside you. While we have our share of veterans, we have also have more than a few less experienced recruits, many of whom look up to you, in case you were not aware. Aww. Okay, I'll give them the morale that they need, and inspiration, and motivation. Uh, good, I knew you would understand. Yuihase can apprise you of the details. When the task is complete, come and find me at the observatorium. Captain Ilbert and I are meeting there to discuss the latest developments in his investigation. The Temple Knights shall hold Snowcloak in our absence. Let us leave them to their work. Ours is more pressing. You know what, Mephili? I kind of noticed something. He doesn't really talk to you, but he talks at you. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm about to run off. <laughs> okay, what's up? There you are, Siri. Commander Olivier instructed me to wait for you. Your census is most welcome, believe me. Most of the third hail from Old Da. If we're a man accustomed to the field sand beneath his boots, the crunch of snow can be rather disconcerting. What's to the matter at hand? Nearly a moment ago, I received word that the heretics we seek have been spotted making for Danifin Pass. My braves are already in pursuit, and I should be grateful if you would join them. I myself should part of the hunt. Never let it be said that I do not earn my coin. A network, or, a network of tunnels throughout Snowcloak is extensive. A full survey will take time. Alright, I'll leave you to it. Alright, I'm kind of glad that the whole Snowcloak thing went by, like, really smoothly. Let's uh, complete this one quest though, and then we'll head out and help them with that. Okay. Oh wait, no. You're over here. A snow wolf indeed. You will not be needing the brand of wine tonight, I believe. Once it as it is, it extracts the price. The patrol is no doubt back at camp by now. They had a close call, those men. A terrible shame it would have been had they been slain by a common thing as like a behemoth when they are meant to face dragons. A common thing. Alright, let's go. Let's go find some heretics. Hey, buddy. You okay? Those balls, my ankle is on fire. Come up with a rock or something and twist it as I fell. The others went on ahead, though. Through Danfin Pass. Hurry, and you might catch up. If you aren't sure where to go, look for tracks. The snow is fresh, so they should be hard to find. Okay. Yeah, hang in there, buddy. Okay, so it's 
through here. This is Danifin Pass. Where? Tracks lead southeast. Okay. All right. Now we found something. Got it. Okay. Oh, there's a guy here. Hey, buddy. What happened? Zion, what are you doing here? The heretics. Uh, I'm not sure. There was a great skilled beast that. <coughs> and you, Hase. I think. I think he went east on his own. The heretics split up, so we did too. You seem pretty frazzled there, my friend. Take it easy. Oh. New Hase, what happened? I won't get paid enough for this. <laughs> Wait, is that guy doing magic? Yes, you are. You're gonna stop that right now. Hateful Harrier. You okay? How embarrassing. Also intent on following the heretic's tracks. I almost failed to notice they had doubled back. Almost, mind you. I'm gonna try to sneak up behind me and got a knife in the gut for his troubles. <laughs> Holy shit. I found myself alone, so I started searching the dead man's knapsack for anything of interest. And lo and behold, before his friends found me, I came upon this. What? What is that? Where did you find a paper? Withdraw in groups of three or less to the observatorium. Give this signal a wait. The merchant will be wait watching. Be late and be left for dead. It speaks for itself, does it not? They can't possibly mean to a rendezvous inside the palace, inside the place. So we should restrict our search to the surrounding areas. Let me rephrase that. You should restrict your search to the wilderness around the observatorium. I will need more than a moment's rest to recover from these wounds. Okay. I think you'll be fine with the, you know, bass around and stuff. Yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, got all these trees. God damn it. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's an observatorium. There's a suspicious curse in here. Hello, sir. What are you doing over here outside these walls? I'm through with listening of your excuses. We leave now. How? The woods are crawling with those blue coats, and the knights are searching every wagon that passes through the gates. Hey, guys. What are you doing over here? Well, stay with her then if you think you'll face any fair any better. Ha! Ah, now, now, there's no need for that. There are places like this in my homeland. Sacred snow-capped peaks where blood must not be shed. Nagiri! Here your lands ever thirst for the blood of the fallen. And by your deeds, it has drunk deep. No, I have done no wrong. None but meet in secret with heretics. Deny it all you will. We shall have the truth from you yet. Inquisitors are not the only ones skilled in the art of interrogation. Damn it all. Alright, well that went really well. Fancy meeting you here, Sari. I presume your work at the third brought you hither? What a tangled web. Lest you wonder. But we came not for the heretics, but for the merchant who has been conspiring with them. He came to our attention during the course of our investigation into the ivy. It beggars belief, I know, but it seems our favorite Garland spy may have been providing assistance to Iceheart. Really? Were it not for the efforts of Lady Ugiri and her shinobi, we might never have discovered this connection. Master Nofalon is too kind. I fear my people and I have done little to aid your search for the spy. 
We long to strike back against the Empire and weaken their influence in this land. To prevent the tragedy which befell Dolma from reoccurring. The days ahead and the work they promised will require a very particular set of skills. Skills which I am fortunate enough to possess. If you will allow it, I would accompany you until the investigation is complete. That is the most generous offer, Lady Ugiri. And one which I gladly accept. Thank you. Though I may disappear for a time, know that I shall never be far. I shall always be watching. A comforting thought. Come, Sari. Let us wait inside for Captain Ilberg to return and deliver his report. Alright. See you around, Ugiri. Where's Ilbert? Captain Ilbert seemed confident that the merchant's resolve would swiftly crumble when pressed, so we should have new information ere long. As to whether it will bring us any closer to learning the Ivy's identity, I would rather not say. Given our adversary's cunning, I shall consider us fortunate if we are spared another wild dodo chase. The gods know we have more than enough to occupy our time as it is. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, what's this? Oh. oh, it doesn't look that great. I mean, the skirt part on the side is cute, but I mean, I don't know. The armor bit of it is kind of, eh. Okay, uh, oh, look, here he is. Captain Ilbert, your report, if you will. Aye, Commander. Firstly, with regards to the heretic we captured, I regret to say that the man could tell us not that we did not, did not already know of Shima. We have since handed him over to the Shkardian authorities. Henceforth, the Holy See will pursue the matter independently. Our inquiries concerning the ivy, however, have proven more fruitful. We have ascertained the channel by which the heretics acquired their information on the shipment routes. Go on. You will recall the flame we first identified as being in the ivy's employ. From him, we were able to trace a trail of conspirators, each taking us closer to his master. Alas, the trail came to an uproot then. Fearing that the investigation had been compromised, we took the necessary step of detaining all suspected of conspiracy. Oh shit. There are five on the list, including a flame stationed at Revenant's toll. The man's primary duty was to keep an inventory of donations from abroad, particulars of which we, he would share with benefactors, thereby ensuring the needs that needs to not go unfulfilled. By virtue of his role, he was privy to the details of all shipments bound for the settlement. Needless to say, that included those originating from House Fortong. He knew the precise route the caravan would take, and he sold that information to a merchant. Motherfucker, so that's how he got it. That's how they figured out and then started attacking the shipments. I think I can guess which one. None other. With low encouragement, he soon confessed to knowingly aiding and abetting the heretics. Well, that is one mystery solved, at least. But what of the ivy? Are we any closer to prizing off his mask? I dare say we are, Commander. Our relentless pursuit has forced him to commit a grave error. In a desperate bid to cover his tracks, the ivy resorted to exercising certain administrative powers available only to high-ranking members of the Immortal Flames. If you consider then that our investigation is, none, is known to barely a handful of them, the field of suspects is greatly narrowed. You mean to say that the agent is among Raupon's inner innermost circle? Someone who has been with him since the Immortal Flames establishment? It is the most plausible explanation. The infiltration had likely occurred during the company's founding, with the groundwork for the act being laid beforehand. To slip into a position of authority unremarked, it remained above suspicion all these years. I, I too was surprised. There really should not have been. Of the three grand companies, Uldal was ever the more vulnerable to infiltration. Yeah, that place is all fucked, man. 
I mean, the other places are also kind of a little fucked, but the uh, world all has like, ugh. Okay, take a sip of water for a second there. Okay. Fucking old Oz, like, just full of, like, cr crooked cops and <laughs> um, other bought-out people and stuff. Bribery and... It's like a, ugh, a wretched hive. Both Limbs of Lomentz and Gridani have long-standing armed forces that lent themselves well to the formation of the Maelstrom and the Order of the Twin Adder. To all intents and purposes, it was the same people, loyal ones, mine, under the same leadership, only the banner was different. Not so the flames. Old Oz military was made of despair orders, most of which we glorified, were glorified missionary companies that answered only to their own paymasters. There it is. <sighs> Hardly an ideal environment in which to establish something as high-minded as a grant company. The difficulties Raban faced when facing founding the Moral Flames are well known. Even after he had convinced his Hell Syndicate members to share the cost, there remained the small matter of finding enough bodies to fill the ranks. Indeed, I mean, given the pressing nature of the Imperial threat, that meant regretting recruiting every passing cell sword. Amidst the chaos of its founding, it would have been child's play to infiltrate the company. A good deal easier than now, yeah, I... The Immortal Flames have ever been caught between conflicting interests, the public and the private. Though the Monitors ultimately agreed to support the organization's founding, it was not a charity that they did so, but simple self-preservation. Had Neil Van Dorn's ambitions been any less apocalyptic, you may be sure that they would never have risked supplying Grand with an army. Tis but a wonder they did not attempt to extinguish the flames the moment the, da the danger had passed. Ahem, returning to the present. Even as I speak, our Doman allies are shadowing several high-ranking flames, any of whom could be the Ivy. Desiring to deal a blow against the Empire, the refugees were eager to lend us their aid. I expect to hear from them ere long. Very good. Pray continue your investigation with the first. Meanwhile, how the second attend to the unrest, the third can join the fourth in inspecting crystal shipments. If they notice anything unusual, I want to know about it. If she was summoned in like the manner to the, the primals, the heretics will be looking for other supplies. For further supplies. Understood, Commander. I shall send word to Sir Amir, informing him of our success in identifying the heretics' abitors. Hopefully the information will be of some use to the Ishgardians. It is time, Commander. Yes, I am aware. An emergency council of the Alliance leadership has been called. There have been developments in Garlemald that will see him. As Commander of the Crystal Braves, my presence has been requested. I would have you accompany me, Sari. As the realm's stoutest champion, it is only me tis only that you be present for the discussion. Oh, and the antecedent has already given her consent, lest you worry. Okay. I mean, I don't know why I have to be there. I don't, I don't like this diplomacy shit. It's fucking boring to deal with. Why do you keep dragging me into it? I don't like it. Stop. <laughs> like me, you are doubtless eager to conclude our business with Iceheart. I mean, yeah, I wanted to fight her. But until another path to her sanctum is found, she will remain, remain beyond our reach. The Philly and the Archons are sparing no effort to secure an alternate route. Until such time as they succeed, I suggest we give some thought to the realm's other problems. I shall go on ahead to Gridania, in readiness for the coming council. Meet me at Norfolk's altar, and we shall make our way to the Lotus Stand together. Okay. So, off we go to the Lotus Stand now. Going to New Gridania. Okay. Here we go. So we still have to find a way to ice heart. Still gotta find the ivy. Oh, 
What else is there? Anyway, I'm gonna glamour plate this real quick. Um. But once, once it loads, I guess. Okay. Okay, that's better. Let's see. Oh yeah, Conjure Guild. <laughs> I don't want to do this. It's boring. Every freaking time there's a boring meeting. What do I do? I just sit there. I just sit there and listen. I'm not good at this. This is why I don't speak up. My thanks for coming, Sari. Yeah, sure, whatever. When you are ready, speak with the conjurer yonder. You should show us to the lotus stand. Yeah, I know how this works. Yeah, I'll join them. Let me in. Alright. Hi, everyone. I'm here. I don't think I need to be, but here I am. Change has come to the Garlean Empire, and we must discuss the implications. The rumors are true then? The war of succession is ended. Oh, there's still wars done? Oh shit. It is. A new emperor reigns in Garlemald. Who? The birth and all too rapid expansion of the Garlean Empire is commonly attributed to the strategic brilliance of Solus Zosgalvis, yet he did not rule alone. Several members of the royal household also distinguished themselves during his reign. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, it was the eldest son who stood to inherit the throne, until his most untimely passing. I thought us fortunate when I learned that the Emperor had died without naming a successor. <laughs> oh, he just on the freaking caution. Would that the Garlean Empire had died with him. He's a thick boy. It was the grandson and his uncle who had the strongest claims, was it not? Indeed. Yet claims count for little without the power to assert them. High Legatus Varus Ye Galvis is a respected military leader. Not so his uncle. Hmm. So young Varus has torn the crown from his uncle's grasp and taken his place at the head of the Empire. God dang, this guy's huge. Given the troubled nature of his succession, mm -hmm. the new emperor will require time to seal his grip on power. Yet have no doubt but that he shall, for there are none left with strength enough to oppose him. Since the success of Operation Archon, the remnants of the 14th Legion and the forces occupying Alamigo have done naught but fortify their positions. But you can be sure they'll be ready to march on us again, if their Emperor gives the word. When? Not huh. if. They say this Varus was so set upon Eorzean annexation, that he spoke out against the Meteor Project. 
Oh shit. So he's gonna come Amy, after us at some point. The new Emperor's intentions are of great concern to us all. I propose that we set aside the Cartano dispute for the present and discuss what measures the Alliance might take to prepare for a resumption of hostilities with Garlemald. Yeah, because it's only a matter of time at Moreover, this point. I move that we re-examine the question of how our former allies in Ishgard might be persuaded to retake their place at our side. Could Eorzea but stand as one to deal a grave blow to our enemy's ambitions? Yeah, but right now they're in the middle of a, you know, a war with the dragons and they don't want to focus on anything else but to deal with that problem. I mean, I can see why that, you know, they're already fighting one war, why are they going to get sucked into fighting another war, you know, and they're going to tear apart their resources like that and their, and their, you know, the men, the people fighting, yeah. Alvin, I'll try to reason with Amrick, but that didn't go anywhere. Oh, I guess everyone's all going home now. Bye. Well, I suppose we should be grateful that they have finally acknowledged the inevitability of Imperial attack. Who knows? They may even do something about it. <laughs> oh, Fanon, I mean... <laughs> oh man, just the attitude he has in that. It's like, someone who knew there was a problem there is like, oh, now they're realizing there's a problem, and then... And now he's like, oh, he's kind of like talking down on them, being like, oh, they might do something about it now. Oh, goodness, Alvaron. If only the leaders of Ishgard would follow their example and stop hiding behind their gates, praying for the coming storm to pass them by. Again, they kind of have a reason for that. But that is a discussion for another time. Yeah. At present, I am more concerned by the fact that the Alliance's mooted preparations will be made known to the Garleans many moons before their coming. So long as the Ivy eludes our grasp, no secret is safe. Yeah, that's true. We gotta find the Ivy. Okay, um, alright Alphanon, uh, what's there to do then? It would not have escaped your notice that the nations of Aorus are no nearer to being of one purpose, despite the protestations to the, to the contrary. Plainly, the threat of an insurgent Garlemald is not enough to stir them. And the reason for this? Deeper to mistrust amongst the citizenry. The nation's leaders can't come to all the understanding, no, can come to all the understanding they like. But their unity means little and less to the common folk. Take the Lamenzins, for instance. Though Admiral Mervub outlawed piracy over a decade ago, foreigners still picture the nation as a haven for grog smelling wood legged, wooden legged cutthroats. And likewise, the Gradonians are mocked as hermits who talk to trees. And you will don scarred as swillers who worship coin. I mean, but the last one's true. <laughs> Not that such sentiments are entirely without grounds, of course. <laughs> there you go. Take that pillar of on society, Telegia to Legi, for example. But that's beside the point. The fact is that people are aware of outsiders, whether they have cause to be or not. On that basis, one could argue that the conflict of Cartano is a necessary evil. Each nation has its warmongering faction that advocates the acquisition of Omega. In order to placate them, we present them something resembling warfare and thereby curb their appetite for full-scale conflict. 
But enough idle musing. Let us speak of a more pressing matter. The Mighty. Since I spoke at the observatorium, Captain Elbert has further shortened his list of suspects. And by happy coincidence, the one he deems the most likely candidate is lately come to Gridania. They came to Gridania? The hunt nears its answer. All that remains is the corner of quarry. Seek out Ober near the adder's nest. He will give you the particulars. Should there be any developments in Curthus, you may, sure, may be sure that I will send word without delay. In the meantime, I wish you success in apprehending the ivy. Okay. Guess we'll go here. And teleport away. Ah, oh, man. All these freaking countries are all messed up. Why do they have so many problems? <laughs> Why can't they just be normal? Look at that pink elephant, hi. Oh boy, okay. Let's just go over here. Wait, oops. I missed him. He's over there. <laughs> Hi, Elbert. Uh, it's not like I didn't see you in the blue. My thanks for coming, Scion. Doubtless the commander has informed you, but we have unmasked the ivy. From this point on, we must proceed with extreme caution. Oh, so you found her. Found them. Hold up. Okay, inventory is fine. Okay, I don't know why, I just got a little paranoid for a second there. Let me just fix it. Oh, fuck. Okay, Elbert. Let's go. Tell me who the Ivy is. Listen well, the spy we have been seeking all this time is none other than Flame Marshal Aline Royer, I think. I don't know. Rob on second in command. Oh shit, she was just there with us! Prior to joining the Immortal Flames, she was a mercenary of no small renown. And they say her skill with a polearm had to be seen to be believed. A Vishgardian birth. She is the highest ranked foreigner in the Immortal Flames, or in the Flame General himself, of course. She came from Ishgard. When he formed the Grand Company, Rabban chose people based on their worth. Whence they held was of no interest. The Monitor saw things differently, however. Having funded the Enterprise, they reserved the right to reject candidates nominated for high-ranking positions. And it was no secret that they did not favor foreigners, Ishgardians especially, after the way they, well, the Holy See forsook the Alliance. Yet the Monitors did not raise so much as a murmur of protest when Royer was appointed to her post. Passing strange, is it not? Could it be that the Ivy was some, has some hold over the monitorists? Oh shit, that was close. But these revelations are secondary to our current, mis current mission. Of foremost interest to us is Roya's presence, presence here now. As you may be aware, it is the duty of the Flame Marshal to command the Mortal Flames in the absence of the Flame General. While Rabban attended the Council of Alliance leaders, she should have remained in the Hall of Flames. Oh shit, Taki, you're right. The woman has no business being in Gridania, yet here she is nonetheless. On some pretense, she's up to something. Mark my words. 
Even as we speak, I have a dozen men trawling in the flames records for evidence of Royer's guilt. But if we can catch her red-handed, we shall have all the proof we need. Which brings me to the plant. I have people watching the city gates, the airship landing, and the docks. Every point of egress. She cannot leave without our knowledge. All that remains is to shadow her until she betrays her true purpose. Can I rely upon your eyes, Sion? You got it. I got the eyes of a hunter. And she's my quarry. Yeah. <laughs> you have my thanks. Let's go then. And take care not to alert our quarry. Alright, let's go. Okay, so I guess we're going over here. <laughs> the delayed uh, <laughs> fanfare. Alright, do you see her? Roy is headed in the direction of the Blue Badger Gate with me. The Blue Badger Gate. With me, Sion. I like the pink elephants dancing. Oh, they're all part of the same people. Disco. Alright. I'm gonna show my excitement by jumping. <laughs> okay. So down over here. So Rhea has entered the car lane canopy. Meeting someone perhaps chance? Or could it be she means to board an airship? Pray look for her within. If she is not on the upper floor, try the landing area below. One of mine is stationed there, and she may have seen something. Infamy is her name. I shall remain here in case Roya reappears. What shoes are that? Oh, it's level 90. Oh. Man, does it look good. Ah, oh, for Archer and Bart and all that. Oh, okay, interesting. I think they're down below. I don't see the guy here. Or whoever that is. There. Alright, did you see her? Sariseo, such an unexpected pleasure. What brings you here? Uh, uh, so so busy, you say. How uh, pleasant. No, she didn't come this way. I've noted every passenger, and none bore any resemblance. Well, don't let me keep you. Okay. Got it. So where did she go? Over? Uh, she wasn't down there. Nowhere to be seen, you say. And you're sure she's not board an airship? Huh, she did not come back out either. Where in the seven hells could she have gone? The roost. How could I forget? Greetings, good sir. My interest you in some moon toy tonic? A cup a day abuse a man with great vigor. You take my meaning. <laughs> Perhaps another time, friend. <laughs> Wait, that necklace. You're a shinobi Doma. The wind you seek has left Gridani by way of West Shore Pier. She is attired as a merchant, but these eyes are not so easily deceived. You may wish to take your search to the East Shroud. Rest assured that we shall continue to support you from the shadows. Oh shit. Damn, you guys are good. I love that we have you on our side. I think the twelve from the domains were not for their unique talents. Raya would have disappeared without a trace. Indeed.
These things are like really kind of gaudy, I think. Where we go now? Our heart leads us to the East Shroud Scion. I suggest we follow Roya's example and take the ferry from the West Shore Pier. You'll doubtless wish to make certain preparations. See to them while I go on ahead. I shall wait for you at Sweet Bloom Pier. Okay. Let's go check it out. Okay, Sweet Bloom Pier, Sweet Bloom Pier, uh... Well, is that next to the Lancer's Guild? Yes. Oh wait, no, I don't need to go in there. <laughs> oh man, I went there so many times that I haven't that... Wait. Sick of eating brain. We're sick of any rage during Gadani on special security detail. Any suspicious activity will be swiftly snipped in the blood. Oh wait, you're a cowboy. Any taller than me. Hi. Okay, let's go this way. Oh, okay. That was weird. <laughs> Take me, take me, take me, take me. Ah, oh, there you are. Alright, so what's the plan, Ilburn? This way, my friends. Oh, you hear you. Your quarry makes for the Hawthorne Hut. If Roya is truly the one we seek, we can expect that she means to make contact with her guardian masters there. An explanation is in order. You are no doubt aware that the guardians have their own method of communication with great distances. Well, our ingenious friends at Garland Ironworks have provided us with devices which disrupt these communications. And we have installed them around the city-states. In so doing, we have made it difficult for Imperial a agents to correspond with their masters. Ooh, that is some smart thinking. I love it. Thank you, Sid. Roya with us have no choice but to rendezvous with her Imperial contact directly. Yet, as a well-known face in the Immortal Flames, she cannot move about Thanalan without being recognized. It will only be a matter of time before someone saw through her disguise. It is for this reason, I believe, that she has chosen the Black Shroud for a clandestine meeting. The L is in her common sight here, and her comings and goings are not like to turn any heads. And they don't know her, obviously, at least not that well. As my scouts tell it, the Garleans have sent agents with a mind to destroy the devices and render such direct contact unnecessary. Fortunately, our shinobi have thus far been successful in rebuffing their efforts. This is it. We need only make for Hawthorne Hut's, Hawthorne's Hut and catch Roya in the act. Here we go. Wait, what's over here? What? I can't talk to this lady either. Huh. Okay. Okay. So she is over here. Alright guys, here we are. My people report that our quarry has departed for the Bramble Patch. I haven't returned to the Gnarls when she came, but perhaps it is all for the better. To convict someone of her standing will require damning evidence against her. What could be better than to catch her in the act where she meets with her Garlean masters? 
My countrymen and I shall lie in wait in the shadows. Shed warily, my friends. Okay. We got this, Yukiri. Don't worry. Alright, Kimchi. Let's go. Here we go. Hey, Gary. Did you see her? Just beyond, Raya is in conversation with an individual clad in the manner of an adventure. An imperial intermediary, no doubt. This is it. With me. Alright, let's do this. Let's catch her. Catch her in the act. Flame Marshal Aline Royer, you're under arrest for treason and espionage. You were followed, you bloody fool. Oh, good job, you Gary. Damnation. Oh, yeah, here we go. Shinobi. Why isn't that one wearing a mask? Huh. You are unarmed, my lady, and scarcely guard for battle. But if you wish to fight, you are welcome to try. What is the meaning of this, Captain? Would you arrest me for strolling in the Tulswood? Well, last I looked, that was no crime. I knew I was conversing with passing strangers. Then why was your friend running? You feign ignorance, then. Very well. If you do think of something to say, there will be plenty of time to say it later. Now, come quietly, or I shall make you wish you had. I'll offer you no struggle. After all, I have not to hide. Okay. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Oh damn, she looked at you with like snake eyes right now. If looks could kill. Alright, well that was easy. Shame that it didn't come down to a fight, but you know. You win them, you win some, you lose some. Hey Gary. Are you ready to head out? Even a warrior of Royez and Renown could not have hoped to escape by force. Despite her claims, her surrender does not bespeak innocence. But an awareness that her position is untenable. When the ivy thus uprooted, or with the ivy thus uprooted, it is to be hoped that the tendrils she entwined around the mortal flames will gradually wither and die. Mayhap then the people will doll have the grand company they deserve. But let us speak of the present. If I may ask, what will you do now, Siri? Mm, not quite sure yet, but I mean, oh, there's still the whole ice heart thing going on. Okay, well, my phone acted up right now. That's weird. Okay. So, silence seek a way into ice heart sanctum. Then I dare say you're eager to return to the Rising Suns. Pay, do not let me keep you. Fear not, my countrymen and I shall tend to the aftermath. You need not waste your talents here. And speaking of talents, have you considered training in the arts of the Shinobi? You have the aptitude for it, I believe. So please, give us some thought. Till next time, my friend. You know what, I did kind of consider it. Something different to look at, you know? Hey, look at these people running through. Hi! Okay, gotta talk to him in Philia. In flagrante delecto. Hmm. Okay, give me a second, get some water. Oh, the 
pink sky. Okay. Here we go. Ah, another job well done. Good job, me. Pat myself on the back. Oh, things have changed around a little bit. I'm stuck. Okay. Yes, but hey, Gary, you're not. You're missing the point. The individual doesn't matter. It was a team effort, and I was the one who. who what? <laughs> a rousing tale of a comrade's valor. Truly, we are fortunate to count Lady Ugiri a friend. Dankard's tales of Lady Ugiri be almost beggar belief. My heart is fair fit to burst from admiration. Oh, I see. They're all like fawning over Ugiri's stuff and ignoring Thancred and what he did. Oh, hey guys, where'd you go? She she can't be seriously considering it. Life as a street performer should be one's last resort, not the first. Wait, oh! <laughs> She's actually a really good juggler, oh my god. Wow, Tataru did not know you had that talent. Steady, steady, not bad, eh? Don't know more practice, I could earn a fortune at the Ruby Road Exchange. <laughs> the Tara is going beyond childish fantasies of becoming a songstress. Now, she aspires to be... Uh, to be a legendary street performer. <laughs> oh, okay. So talking about this, um... I remember in the, in the scene in the back of the... Right, in the Waking Sands, um... You see Tahara like stop and make a mention of Oh, I should ask Flamine to show me any pointers about mining. That was originally part of a... Uh, there was originally a quest in this. Where she would pick up mining and Manfili would tell you, Hey, she kind of went off toward, you know, outside Mordona, you know. Well, like outside Revenant's Toll, you know, out in the wild where there's dangerous creatures. And she tells you, like, I'm worried about her safety, so can you go check on her? Make sure she'll be, she's okay. So, you go out, and then she's over there mining and singing, and... Oh shit, they're doing another contest. And, um... And then, yeah, sure enough, they're in the... It's like a little mini cutscene where a morble is, like... Coming up to, like, attack her, and then obviously you come in to save her. I think they should have left that in, because I kind of like that little side stuff of her trying to find something to do to raise money. <laughs> Maha, I could do this all day. All day! <laughs> it was a battle of wills, a struggle for supremacy. Our fighting styles may differ, but this unyielding spirit is the same in warriors the world over. I must admit, this exercise here has never feels so easy. Well, this movements appear comical. It does seem to be having the, the desired effect. A. Squats are good for your thighs and your butt. Strength, hurry. On your honor as a sign. I forbid you to surrender. Look at that, your bro's cheering on. Oh, ha. Ah. I cannot I go on much longer. <laughs> Alright, anyone back here? Nothing, okay. Alright, that was fun talking to everyone. Alright, I'm feeling that job well done. Welcome back, Siri. I understand that Elfanon had a task for you. May I ask what it was? Yeah, we were tracking down the ivy and shit. And then we had a uh, that meeting. Charges of treason and espionage against Elaine, Elaine Royer. I can scarce believe it. Could there not have been some manner of misunderstanding? No, it was pretty spot on. No, it feels us not to dwell on it. Where the truth may be, we must trust the authorities to uncover it. Let us speak of another matter. 
I am pleased to report that we have made progress in our efforts to find a way into Ice Heart's sanctum. Oh, we have. What do you got? As you may recall, Ice Heart used the ice, uh, the etherite, yeah, in the depths of Snowcloak to teleport a short distance to the west, most likely to a sanctuary of some description. It is there that we suspect she means to summon Shiva, using the crystal she stole from the house for Top's caravan. The heretics believe that they are bringing about the second coming of their patient saint. But if, as we suspect, they mean to hold a summoning ritual of the kind employed by the beast tribes, it seems likely the result will be something more akin to a primal. Suffice to say, they must be stopped. And stop them we shall. But first, we must surmount the obstacle that Iceheart has placed in our path. Ordinarily, it would be a simple matter to tap into the established Ethernet and thereby follow our quarry. However, despite our best efforts, we have been unable to ascertain the position of the etherite to which she teleported. Our prevailing theory is that she destroyed the second etherite upon arrival. A reckless, desperate measure, but also an effective one. After discussing the matter at Lake with Uriange, we have concluded that we lack the expertise to develop a solution. Okay. Which is why we have called upon the aid of one who does possess such expertise. A colleague of ours, who is currently en route to Revenant's Toll, from Charlotte. She should be arriving within the hour, in fact. Oh, are we going to meet her? Since you are here, may I help we can welcome her together. I am certain she would appreciate the gesture. Let us make our way to the northern gates, and await her coming. Okay, cool. I mean... Probably like, you know, another one of you types, all studious and stuff, but possible new friend, maybe? Okay. So she's up here, right? Ah, here we go. What manner of woman is she, I wonder? We have spoken before via Link Pro, of course. But it is not the same. Oh, so you haven't even... Don't properly know her. Interesting. Um... Oh wait, I hear something, Mavilia. That girl was also pretty cute. Ooh, she's tall. Minfilia, am I right? None other. I bid you welcome oh. to Revenant's Toll, and thank you for traveling so far on such short notice. <laughs> As if I could ever say no to Urianje. Oh. Uh, no hi. is an accomplished Charlian scholar and an authority on Etherite technologies. Oh. She has nice played to meet an you. invaluable role in our search for a means to capture Asian souls. Oh, so you're looking at that too. Charmed, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. You definitely look cool. I'll, I'll give you that. And you're so tall. For an outpost in an ether rich wasteland, this place is a good deal livelier than I expected. Just goes to show that you never know until you know. Wait, who is this? Where where has my little girl gone? What? There's a rising sun signs, and we have much to discuss. 
Wait, what the fuck is this? Where, where can she be? Ruby, Ruby. Ruby. I have never seen this NPC before. What the hell? Looking for Ruby in all the wrong places. Oh, what? That was weird. Also really weird how the music just stops here. Still, I wonder what was up about that NPC. Go at the tower, go. Okay, here we are. Is that Tupsy Mod on the wall back there? I'm amazed you managed to find all the pieces after, well, you know. Oh. Gang's all here. Moon! Gods, it's been ages! Oh, longer, sister. A joyous reunion indeed. <laughs> well, of course it is. Moon and I are like twin sisters. Your sister from another mister. Save in appearance and aptitude. Damn, you really had to like do her like that. Everyone, all right. I have your attention. We have with us an esteemed guest who has come from Shalian to assist us. Yeah, and she looks cool. I bid Moonbreeder join us here that she might share with us her extensive knowledge of etherites. Also, as mm -hmm. many of you are already aware, she has been overseeing our research into white orosite, a sample of which she has been good enough to bring with her. Orosite? What would be this? Ah. Well, I had to come, didn't I? You'd have to be bloody daft to turn your nose up at a chance like this. Where better to conduct my final tests than a land so steep to neither you can taste it? Tis plain the passage of the years hath done little to dampen thy youthful spirits. And nothing at all to reform thy youthful manner. Where in the hells have you been hiding? In the waking sands. I yeah, can tell you where it's at. Me. Oh my gosh, she's so strong. I come all this way, and that's what you have to say to me. I much preferred when you were pleading with me to drop everything and hurry to your side. What was it you said? None save thee can satisfy this need. Oh. Go on. <laughs> Thine artless attempts to misrepresent mine all too innocent motives do thee little credit. 
Mine intent, as well thou knowest, was but to impress upon thee the gravity of the circumstance. Lest thou doubt, a deiform entity shall shortly be summoned, save if thou and no other grantest my compeers thine aid. Okay, good save there. <laughs> you still haven't found it then? You're missing etherite. No. We have not. No. We know that Iceheart teleported to an etherite not far from the first. Yet even after careful analysis, we could not locate the second beacon. We now suspect that the mm -hmm. heretics destroyed the second etherite to impede our pursuit. Our allies continue to scour Snowcloak for Iceheart Sanctuary. But we have no guarantee that they will find it. Yet it must be found, for even now Iceheart prepares to call upon Saint Shiva. Yeah, and that's the urgency, the sorry, urgency of finding it. If the etherite's been destroyed, then that's that. Although, you're absolutely sure she used the first etherite, are you? She didn't just use teleportation magics. They sure look like it. One of our own witness to her escape. I can say with absolute certainty that Iceheart used the etherite. Yep, saw my own eyes. I did. Mm-hmm. In that case, there might be a way, so long as the ethereal current is still flowing. Huh? Truly? How? We yeah, use explain. The current to recreate the beacon. As you know, etherites are a bit like lighthouses. We use them to reconstitute our physical forms when crossing the ethereal sea. Without them, we'd lose all sense of direction and our essence would dissipate. Oh, so that means we can't die if we teleport. However, we don't rely solely on these beacons. There are currents of ether which flow between them. Currents which help guide us to our destination. Now, these currents hmm. will gradually dwindle away to nothing if an etherite is destroyed. But, if even a sluggish flow remains, we could theoretically use it to direct a surge of concentrated ether towards the void left by the beacon, and thereby fill it up again. Ah, oh, that's smart. Like opening the floodgates to fill a dry riverbed. Though, correct me if I'm wrong, but would we not need a veritable reservoir of ether? Uh, yeah. In concert, we might manage to channel a sufficient volume, yet that is not my chief concern. To direct the flow of so great a volume of ether with the requisite precision would be a nigh impossible task in itself. So, yeah, how do you get around this? I succeeded in facilitating travel to an unattuned beacon. That which you describe sounds considerably more difficult. <laughs> and dangerous! Every person who has attempted to teleport in this fashion has died in the process. They, oh, however, shit. did not have wide aura sight at their disposal. Oh, what? I can so use it to channel all the ether you can give me into the etherite. However, wide aura sight cannot retain ether for an extended period of time, so we would need to infuse it immediately beforehand. Okay. Just so you know, I'd confidently give this plan better than even odds of success. And if the worst comes to worst, your people won't suffer. Okay. Don't That's where the chance. The lives of our best and brightest. We have not the time to seek other options. If the ethereal current still flows, we shall carry out Moonbreeder's plan. All oh, right, here we go. That's the spirit. Let's roll the dice. Mm. Yeah, let's wing it. I like this. I like her attitude. It's great. <laughs> it's some good energy. I have already informed Elfinot of our plan to recreate the beacon in the manner Minbrita, in the manner Minbrita described. He agreed that despite the inherent danger, it represents our only hope of success. He also said that he wished to meet with you at Snowcloak before proceeding. I expect you'll find him waiting for you there when you arrive. I want you to know that I appreciate everything you have done on our behalf, Seri, and that faith you will return to us, as you always have. Oh. That was nice. I mean, it, it was nice that, you know, she said she appreciates me. <laughs> huh. 
Ah, uh, appreciation. It's pretty great stuff. Okay, so... Oh, it's night. Okay, we'll get into there and then we'll be like be like those rats sneaking in. <gasps> but I don't like the rats, so I'm not gonna die. Okay, I have to stop the summoning no matter what. made it. Umbrita. Trust in the power of what Arsite, Sari? And in me, of course. Amrick's not here. Good to see you, Sari. I was starting to wonder if you were having second thoughts. Really. Second thoughts of killing, well, not killing, but fighting someone and stopping a summoning? Captain Ilber sends his regards, by the way. He attends to the interrogation of Aline Royer, in old doll, even as we speak. But I shall distract you from the matter at hand. We can discuss the ivy upon your return. I trust that, by which I mean to say, um, the others are waiting for us at the east right after you, Sion. What? what? What were you trying to say there? Okay, well, I guess it wasn't that important if you backed out. Alright, guess the gang's all here. Are you ready? Oh shoot, they're all giving their ether. There, it's ready. Oh, it's working. I think it is. Ha! It worked. I think. I mean, it looked like it. Try to change the ether right now. Feel for the current. Try to locate the beacon. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Here we go. I felt something. We have done all we can, Siri. For now, let us withdraw. When your final preparations are complete, you must seek out the beacon we have created. If, by the grace of the Twelve, you arrive safely, you must stop Aya's heart before she summons Shiva. You got it. We cannot ignore the possibility that our actions have alerted Ice Heart to our plans. Should that be the case, she may attempt to hasten the completion of the summoning ritual, and if she succeeds, you will have little choice but to face Shiva in battle. Knowing little of this saint, I cannot say if your own strength will suffice, and so I would encourage you to call upon your allies. Some may have reservations about wagering their lives on the success of Umbrita's experiment, but others will surely agree that desperate times call for desperate measures. Ah, before you assemble your party, pray speak with that knight. I believe he has a message for you from Sir Emmerich. Oh. 
have a mind to join you. But your Andre made me promise I wouldn't. Apparently the thought of me becoming Shima's thrall was too much to bear. Huh. As if I'd give her the chance. Oh. I'm afraid I just so cool. Alright, what's up, dude? Madam, Sir Amrick regrets that he cannot be there, be here in person. And as I read you this letter, I have Ishgar faces an unprecedented threat, yet in our hour of need. It is not her knights who stand poised to defend her. Serisail, the warrior of light, savior of Eorzea, your deeds this day shall not be forgotten. Where others would flee, you choose to remain. Where others would falter, you rise to the challenge. Where others would use their gifts for selfish ends, you wield yours in service to a greater cause. May Haloni bless you with good fortune, and see you safely home. Oh. Okay, because the DPS queue is a minute being late, I think we're at the stop here. Quite I will not be able to see what happens next until... Monday night, yeah, after, yeah, after the maintenance <laughs> tomorrow. I think they're finally fixing that housing lottery, thank goodness. Now my main account can probably try another shot at <laughs> getting a house. Uh, hopefully it'll be good luck this time. Alright, so, for now, I'm going to pause it here, and then we'll continue then. Let's see, okay. Alright. So with that, next stream, Monday night. Alright. Good night everyone.